he didn't slough. <laughs> um, he was a powerful orator. He helped to organize and speak at the first major protest of the African American Civil Rights Movement. And this protest was called the Montgomery Bus Boycott. Most of you will have heard of that. It, it started when a woman named Rosa Parks was arrested and fined for refusing to give up her seat on the bus to a, a white man. This began an era of dedicated activism for equal rights and treatment of African Americans in the United States. During this period, they rallied for social, legal, political, and cultural changes to prohibit discrimination and to end segregation. Martin Luther King was really um, uh, interested in Gandhi and took a lot from his life when it came to wanting to speak up and still protest peacefully. He promoted nonviolent resistance. He wanted people to take a stand, to unite, to demand better, and to protest peacefully. These protests he led in the American South were huge, attracted all kinds of people, and were often met with violence. He was jailed 29 times. The greatest opposition came from the Ku Klux Klan group. A lot of abuse and persecution took place, but King and his followers persisted, and the movement gained momentum. He appealed to Christian and American ideals. He won support from the federal government and the northern whites. John F. Kennedy even gave an excellent speech on civil rights a few months before he was assassinated. So it was a very emotionally and politically charged time. In 1963, Martin Luther King um, spoke at a massive march on Washington for jobs and freedom. He gave his famous speech, I Have a Dream There. Most of you will have heard of that. 250,000 people gathered outside Lincoln Memorial to hear a stirring speech. One line from that is written here. You guys can read that. It says, I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I really enjoyed listening to that speech and many other of, other of his speeches on YouTube recently. I got caught up in learning quite a bit about him for the last couple of weeks. Anyway, quite a view, a lot of, lot of people attended those. Lots of um, people got involved in these protests, all kinds of other ethnic people, as well as a lot of white people that supported this civil rights movement. It was a long, hard struggle for the black people. A decade of abuse and persecution for standing up to a system that was so unjust. Most of the civil rights were that they were fighting for were successfully enacted into law of the United States by President Lyndon B. Johnson with the passage of the Civil Rights Act in 1964 and that legally ended segregation. And the Voting Rights Act in 1965 which halted the efforts to keep minorities from voting and gave all people an equal voice. So you'd think Martin Luther was really busy with that, but he still had time to write. He authored six books and he had a family by this time. He had a wife and four children. And I looked at the titles of these books. Um, one there, Where Do We Go From Chaos? Where do we go from here? Chaos or community? I thought these books and the things he said are so pertinent today, right? A deranged black woman even tried to assassinate him at one of his book signings in Harlem during the Harlem Civil Rights Movement, but he survived that. The It was a letter opener that went straight into his heart. They said if he coughed, or sneezed, he would have died because it was right in his aorta and they were able to successfully get it out and still save his life. So that was pretty amazing. 
1964, Martin Luther King was awarded the Nobel Prize for his dynamic leadership of the civil rights movement and steadfast commitment to achieving racial justice through non-violent action. I think he might have been about 32 in that, 35 maybe, that was 1964. A few years later, Martin Luther King was persuaded to get involved with the protests against the Vietnam War. He was assassinated just prior to a large march he was to attend in Washington. His family believes his death was politically motivated. The night before, he gave a speech called, I've been to the mountaintop. Some of the things he said in that speech sounded like he knew he wouldn't be around much longer. I listened to that. It was very moving. Um, just, you know, almost a little eerie. But the next day, um, he did pass away. So, very interesting. This is the young picture of his children and then his children as adults there by his grave. I've been caught up in the um, political stuff this year during COVID more than I ever have in my entire life but there was a lot to be <laughs> educated about and a lot going on from crazy violent protests to people feeling like they didn't have a voice and didn't know what to do so a lot of a lot of anxiety and a lot of change right anyway I think that that was why this was perfect for Martin Luther to come in and give me a message. I was ripe for it. Anyway, this is what he said. This is what I heard. It is time for courage. Not easy, but so worth it. Stand up, use your voice, be an example, especially for your children. No longer be silenced. The number of loving people wanting peaceful action can and will change the world. I felt his inner strength and his grand, his grandness of his mission. I saw a vision of him looking out over a large crowd that he was to speak to and to lead. But at the same time, I felt a, a deep inner strength that felt like it was um, like he was cared about people's hearts as well as his own in developing, you know, a godlike attitude and, you know, that that's what drove his mission. Anyway, I asked for evidence so that I could learn a little bit more about Martin Luther King, so that I could um, Google something and discover a little more so that I really felt connected and, and knew this was him. And I got five or six things here. I wrote them down here. And they just came as little bursts, so I wrote them down. Nin uh, 19, sorry, that's supposed to be 1957. Kettle Black, Shoes or Feet, Daughter, and Ronald Reagan. All of this was in a meditation on January 17th. And the next day on January 18th, I sat down, sat down to my computer to Google and on my phone to, you know, look for of these things. The first thing I found out was 1957. Martin Luther King gave his first national speech. It was called Give Us the Ballot, all about voting rights. And the first of his children was born, a son named Martin III. And he had another son, Dexter, and two daughters, Yolanda and Bernice. All of his children became activists and very educated. The Oldest son is the one with the rounder face, the one with the, the longer skinny face. He looks a little bit more like Martin Luther King. He was the actor in the Rosa Parks movie, and his voice was the voice in a documentary they did about Martin Luther King. So that was kind of interesting. And the year after Martin Luther King was assassinated, his wife started the Martin Luther King Center. So a wonderful little family there.
shoes. Now that was really surprising to see so much about shoes when it came to Martin Luther King. And all I Googled was Martin Luther King and shoes and boom, I got a bunch of stuff. An artist created a video of him making this design of Martin Luther's head and face in a parking lot out of shoes. And if you back up with your eyes and just squint them a little bit, you can see his face. You can see his eyes and his lips pretty predominantly there, but um, sometimes you gotta back up and look a little closer. It doesn't pop out as easily. So that was super interesting, and that was on Google, the video of the guy making that. That was super clever. And I'm just amazed in my mind. Wow, what is coming next? Well, basketball celebrities have Martin Luther King images put on their shoes and slogans about um, equal rights and, and all that kind of stuff. And an artist created some bronze soles to inlay in a sidewalk near his statue in Georgia so that people could stand in his footsteps. And they often use the slogan, walk in his shoes, when they do um, yearly um, walks or memorials for Martin Luther King Day. So I thought, wow, that's just incredible. Well, kettle and black, that one wasn't too hard to figure out. The pot calling the kettle black is a well-known phrase. And I thought it was perfect for what's going on in the political arena and for people in general, even for myself. It symbolizes meaning guarding against hypocrisy and complacency. So again, another super cool clue. The next one was daughter. And this time I looked up Martin Luther King's daughters. His first daughter died at the age of 51 from cancer. But his other daughter, Dr. Bernice King, is a minister, an activist, and she's the president of the Martin Luther King Center now. But what's even more interesting is while I'm going about my stuff that, that day, January 18th, looking into this, I'm on my phone scrolling along. I see a political post on Twitter from Biden. I look at that, and that leads me to another post. And then I find a post by Marianne Williamson. So I think, well, I want to see what she has to say. So I click on that. You know how it goes. And there is Marianne Williams Williamson doing a podcast with Bernice. And they're talking about Martin Luther King because, lo and behold, it turns out that exact day was Martin Luther King Day. I was stunned. So I sat there and listened to the podcast. She talked about her father and his mission and goals and some of his famous quotes and stuff and said that, yes, that he was a man who wanted to change people at the heart as well as change systems. So I was blown away. It was beautiful. The synchronicities were just lining up and they were just amazing. Uh, Ronald Reagan, I looked that up, and it turns out he was the president that signed the national holiday into law in 1983, so that was cool. And all of these clues were there because I asked in spirit for them. I asked for more. I think spirit absolutely loves to help us out, give us evidence, connect in whatever ways they can get through to us. <laughs> so I want this for you guys as well. I'm looking forward to more experiences like this for myself in the future. And I'm happy to have shared this with you. And I'm just going to end here with just a couple of quotes from Martin Luther King. True peace is not merely the absence of tension. It is the presence of justice. Our lives begin and end the day we begin, we come, the day we become silent about things that matter. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Forgiveness is not an occasional act, it's a constant attitude. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. 
Thank you for letting me share this with you. William, I will turn it back to you. Thank you, Laura. That was terrific. Thank you for those inspiring applause. Sorry. <laughs> That's tremendous. Mm -hmm. Thank you for putting in so much work to uh, 